and welcome to 1280 News. My name is Claudia Visca, and today I'll be talking to you about Seasonal Affective Disorder, otherwise known as SAD. It is a type of depression that occurs during the same season each year. It is most common in the fall and winter months, but can occasionally happen in summer months. Some major symptoms associated with SAD are sadness and a despairing mood that is ongoing for over two weeks. These symptoms can impair the person's performance at work, school, or social relationships. Other symptoms can include change in appetite or work, sleep problems, loss of interest in work, hobbies, and people, agitation, feeling slowed down, and fatigue, to name a few. According to the Canadian Mental Health Association, about 2 to 3% of Canadians will experience SAD in their lifetime. Another 15% will experience a mild form of SAD that leaves them only slightly depressed, but still able to carry out everyday tasks. SAD makes up about 10% of all depressive cases. Some groups of people are at a higher risk of SAD. Some adults are at a much higher risk in comparison to children and teenagers. Although this risk begins to decline after the age of 50, researchers are still unsure as to why this happens. Now we will talk with a psychologist and she will offer her expert advice on seasonal affective disorder. Hi Dr. Linda Wang, so good to have you here with us today. So what exactly is SAD and why does it only come around during certain months of the year? Seasonal affective disorder is triggered by changes in the amount of sunlight that each person receives on a daily basis. That is why SAD usually occurs in the fall or winter, when the levels of sunlight drastically decrease as the days are shorter and nighttime is longer. These changes in light may upset a person's biological clock, which controls sleep-wake patterns and disturb the functions of neurotransmitters such as serotonin and dopamine. Serotonin is a chemical that contributes to your well-being and happiness, as well as your ability to fall asleep. Dopamine is also a chemical and is associated with feelings of euphoria, motivation, and concentration. We know that SAD is able to affect anyone, but is there a certain cohort that is more susceptible than others? SAD is most likely to appear in the late teens or early 20s and is most prevalent among women simply due to their genetic makeup. College students are more susceptible as well as their stressful environment and unhealthy habits can aid in the progression of SAD. SAD and other forms of depression are often underreported for societal and cultural reasons. Unfortunately, we live in a society that has a negative overall outlook on depression. For that reason, many students are not aware of this disorder. Many students do not seek help even when they are showing clear signs of SAD or depression. How can SAD be treated and where should people go to seek treatment? There are various different treatments used to help improve symptoms of SAD. Just like other depression disorders, SAD can be treated with antidepressants, specifically serotonin reuptake inhibitors, known as SSRIs. SSRIs help increase the amount of serotonin in your brain. Another popular treatment is light therapy. Light therapy involves sitting near a special light box for around a half hour each day, essentially imitating natural sunlight. Since the lack of sunlight is believed to be a major cause of SAD, light therapy may help reverse it. A bright sunny day is considered to be around 50,000 lux, which is a measure of light intensity, while these specialized lamps are around 10,000 lux. Although it is not as bright as natural light, it is still about 100 times brighter than regular artificial lighting, helping to improve symptoms of SAD. Various studies have shown that light therapy can be an effective treatment for SAD. One study conducted by Burke et al. found that light therapy can cause a significant immediate reduction of depression just after 20 minutes of exposure, with effectiveness peaking at around 40 minutes. Another study conducted by Lam et al. found that light therapy shows similar levels of effectiveness as antidepressants. Both treatments had a clinical response rate of 67% and similar remission rates, 50% for light therapy and 54% for antidepressants. So as you can see, there are many different treatment options available for SAD, but it is important to consult your doctor first to figure out which one is best for you. 
Thank you, Dr. Linda Wang, for your time. That's all the time we have for today. Make sure you tune in next week where we will be discussing alcoholism. And until next time, I'll see you next time. Music Studio. Music.